why I left Jihad. Wallace Shubat is here. Let's welcome him to Kansas City. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The book said, when I finally realized the lies and myths I was taught, I knew it was my duty as a righteous person to speak out. What lies and what myths? Uh, if you have a whole year to go over the lies and have a couple of years to go over the myths. Islamic terrorism is a cult-like process that converts masses into becoming remorseless killers. It's exactly what it is, the situation in the Middle East. It is similar to what you see in Nazi Germany. Uh, I know my, from my own family, my uh, grandfather was friends with Hajj Amin al husseini the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. He was a notorious friend of Adolf Hitler. And he was seen on the eve of the final solution, uh, calling for the destruction of the Jewish people, sitting with Adolf Hitler. And in fact, he was responsible for the death of half a million Jews as a result of stopping the immigration of half a million Jews to Israel. He was a founder of two Bosnian, uh, an Albanian division, two divisions of the Nazi war machine. And they killed 90% of the Jews. So the argument has always been that the uh, Arabs and the Muslims have nothing to do with the Holocaust, which is not true. In fact, most Americans don't realize that the yellow patch that they see in Nazi Germany on the right shoulder that Jews have to put did not come from Nazi Germany. It came from Islam, in which Islam occupied Spain. It came from the Umar Declaration, which is one of the Prophet's friends. He was a caliph of Islam, and he instituted these laws. Very similar laws to what happened in Nazi Germany. Islamic fundamentalism, Islamic radicalism relies on myth, blaming everything on Israel, blaming everything on America. The, uh, the, the Palestinians also depend on a myth that they were the original Canaanites and things like this. Uh, how could we be Canaanites and be Semites at the same time? So I, I started seeing the myth that was taught, taught to us as children in the Palestinian areas. And again, the biggest problem in the Middle East that we had, the myth that the Holocaust never existed. The Holocaust was a fabrication. The Holocaust was a made-up story by the Zionists in order to establish Israel as a state. I learned that myth also to be false. The Holocaust was true. The Holocaust was a reality. Jews died by the millions in the ovens. And 850,000 Jews were forced to be exiled out of the Middle East to have nowhere else to go but Israel. Yet the Middle East and the Muslim world and the Arab world are saying we had nothing to do with persecution of the Jewish people. This is something we have to stop. You know, the Hamans of the world must be stopped. So I decided to start speaking out in 1993 and as a result of course, the world called me racist and Islamophobe. When I used to be a terrorist and wanted to kill Jews, uh, I was called a freedom fighter. In fact, my Prime Minister Yasser Arafat was given the Nobel Peace Prize, a world-leading terrorist given the Nobel Peace Prize. Now that I'm fighting against this evil, now we are the ones being called racists and Islamophobes. I think we need to get the right uh, uh, interpretation of what, what we are doing here. Take us back to your story. You were born in Bethlehem. And at 16, you were involved in taking bombs to the Temple Mount? I the mean, what, what, what was the whole... The brainwashing starts at a very young age. You go to kindergarten, just before the Six-Day War. Uh, and there we, were, we had to sing a song every day. Which means Arabs are beloved and Jews are dogs. Uh, even went to a Christian school, a third and fourth grade. And there I learned all the biblical characters, like Abraham, Jesus, Moses, were Palestinian revolutionists. In fact, this is what you see in Palestinian websites. By the time I went to the government school, learned uh, the Islamic studies, we were taught eschatology. I know how much Christians are interested in eschatology. Muslims are also very interested in eschatology. But in a way, it's in a reverse fashion. Yes, Israel will come back to that land, but that day they come back, the Muslims will gather in surrounding nations and surround Israel and will destroy Israel to the point that the trees and the stones will cry out, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come, O Muslim, come and kill him. Uh, and in fact, martyrdom was emphasized. It's a salvation message, but it's a false gospel. It's a gospel that says, by you dying as a shaheed, that you will enter a paradise. You will assure yourself a place in paradise. There is no assurance of salvation in Islam. The only assurance is if you die as a martyr. And dying as a martyr, blowing yourself up, or killing Jews has been condoned recently in Islam, even though Islam forbids suicide. So the wish and the desire of the youth is to go to paradise. It's a desire that's implanted in all mankind. Yet Satan used this. And so here we were trying to establish 
uh, our own death by our own works that we were enter paradise in order to get 72 virgins and all these things. Now, you know, to North Americans, it's like almost unthinkable that there are schools where kids are taught this. Yes. And in Pakistan, for instance, what do we have, over a million and a half that are being tutored in this form of eccentric Islam? Take Bangladesh alone. 64,000 madrasas are opened in Bangladesh. Hundreds of th thousands of girls being raped in Bangladesh. It's all over, Philippines and Indonesia. And a survey was done, over 73% of Arabs in the Middle East want Islamic fundamentalism as a form of, form of government. This is huge. 113,000 were surveyed. Can you imagine over 73% want Islamic fundamentalist state? Uh, so it's growing tremendously. It's been going on from the 70s. This is why when I became a Christian in 93 pastor, I started speaking on the issue. And nobody was listening to me. I would come to churches like this and I was escorted out. You know, nobody heard of Islamic radicalism. September 11 hit and I, my phone was ringing all day long. How did you know? I said, I knew from the Bible because the Bible warned us. Uh, I saw the martyrs who were beheaded in the name of Jesus. Who's beheading Christians? You know, in fact, most Christians will look at, uh, 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 at the Antichrist. You know, what is the essence of Antichrist is in 1 John 2.22. Who is the liar? He who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is anti-Christ that denies the Father and the Son. Islam as a religion came for one sole purpose alone, and that is to deny that Jesus died on the cross physically, to deny that God is our Father, to deny the triunity of God, that God is a trinity. That's the whole sole purpose of Islam as a religion. And it is to establish Islam to the whole world by the sword and by jihad, and don't kid yourself. Jihad does mean so, uh, fighting by the sword. All hundred hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad is jihad by the sword. And this is what's happening. But Americans don't understand that jihad comes in three phases. Phase one is by financing. Phase two is by political means. Phase three is by the sword. When a Muslim community is less than 20%, it is jihad by the pen and jihad by finances. That's what's happening in America. Once you reach 20% Muslims, look out. You see the results in France. You see the results in Lebanon. You see the results in every single Christian country that had a majority population of Muslims. Now, take us back to your story. I mean, it's a phenomenal transition from being in the PLO as a teenager to being a Christian. How in the world did that happen? Well, in 1993, I challenged my wife to become a Muslim. And she was Catholic, and she said to me, why should I leave my Judeo-Christian heritage? I said, because the Jews corrupted the Bible, number one. The Jews are prophet killers. The Jews spread mad cow disease. The Jews put infertility drugs for the Palestinians so they don't have children. The Jews caused tsunamis. The Jews put uh, you know, mad cow disease in the Cadbury chocolates. The, the, the Jews is run the Congress. The Jews run the media. All the things that we were saying in the demonstrations here in America against you Americans as well. And she says, well, how do you believe there are corruptions in the Bible? You, you never read the Bible. So I said, okay, no problem. So I went over, and I uh, had purchased the Bible for $10. And I started reading it from cover to cover. And I prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I know you're out there. You made me. I didn't come by accident. And I know you're going to show me that the Quran is more superior than the Bible. So I pray. I'm opening my heart to you. You lead me what you want me to know. And it's in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And that was it. And I started doing my analysis. And I ran across a lot of problems in my own life. A lot of problems with my understanding. And the Bible was a mirror. Thank you.